Welcome to Inside the Bear's Den. On this episode, we'll be traveling through the decades, bringing you some of the most iconic songs in music history. Let's get started with Buffalo Music Hall of Fame artist, Jack Civiletto. You may know Jack as a talented guitarist. Maybe you've heard him play alongside the heartfelt vocals of April Mazzone. Or perhaps you've heard him sing with a big band. Well, today, we'll hear Jack bring to life one of the greatest performers of all time, Mr. Frank Sinatra. Please enjoy Civiletto Sings Sinatra. Start spreading the news I'm leaving today I want to be a part of it New York, New York These vagabond shoes Are longing to stray Right through the very heart of it New York, New York I want to wake up In a city That doesn't sleep And find I'm king of the hill Top of the heap These little towns Are In a city that never sleeps And find I'm a number one Top of the list King of the hill A number one These little towns It's up to you, New York, New York. So, Jack, I have to ask you, with your history in playing the blues and your love for it, your passion, your skill, how did you end up doing a Sinatra show? How did this come along? You're fantastic at it. Well, thank you very much. Um, I was singing in the blues band. I tried to learn some blues tunes. And if you heard me sing blues, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to say, well, you know, B.B. Um, King and then Jack Ciboletto. Jack, just, I just don't have that kind of a voice, you know. I'm an Italian kid. Yeah. And the music that I always heard around my house was, was Frank Sinatra, Tony Bennett, Mario Alonzo. I'm just thinking of this, the records that my parents you, had. You mentioned Mario Alonzo. I can remember seeing the, the records. I'd go with my grandparents and stuff, that, and uh, Louis Prima. Harry and, Como. Yeah, that stuff, yeah, right? yeah. So I, I always heard that stuff around my house. And you really are directly influenced by the, the music that you hear, especially when you're young. So I went back to rehearsal, and I said, you know, I was thinking, how about if we did, like, Fly Me to the Moon or Summer Wind? I said, I kind of got a voice, I think, that more like a crooner voice. Two of my most Fly favorite songs. Fly Me to the Moon. And they're going, the band didn't want to do that stuff. 
So I started uh, learning some songs and I got an opportunity to sing at a, um, a birthday party for a friend. And I tried it for the first time using CDs. And you know, I told a few jokes, I sang a few songs, and it kind of went over. Okay. And afterwards, the, uh, uh, the gal, Jackie O'Brien, the owner, she said, you know, this was really fun. Would you, would you want to you know, do a gig here once in a while? And I said, well, I can't. I'm in a band. My weekends are really tied up. I said, but would you consider giving me a steady Tuesday night? She said, well, nobody comes here on Tuesday. We usually close by 8 o'clock. I said, how about if you give me, let me have two hours, 8 to 10, no charge. I said, I'll do it for free. And who would turn that, that down? Yeah. He gave me a showroom, a steady once a week to try new material. I went from wearing a pair of jeans and a sport coat to what I have on now. Okay. And the response was twice what I had. People were asking, could you sing at my daughter's wedding? Could you see, sing at this part? And before long, it was successful and I did very well at it and I enjoyed it. I got to play with a big band. That was really a blast to work with a big band. And I had a nice following. Yeah. Uh, and now I'm at the point where I'm still doing that, but I'm back to playing more, uh, playing more guitar and I play with, with my, uh, my girlfriend, April, who's a fantastic singer, and she and I put a band together. And so I have the love of my life of playing guitar and still singing, but doing a little bit of both, so. Fly me to the moon Let me play among the stars let me see what spring is like on a Jupiter and Mars. In other words, hold my hand. In other words, baby, kiss me. Fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore. You are all I long for, all I worship and adore. In other words, please be true. In other words, I love you. the world on a string sitting on a rainbow I've got that string around my finger what a world what a life I'm in love I've got a song that I sing I can make the rain go every time I move my finger me. Can't you see I'm in love? Life is a beautiful thing As long as I hold the string I'd be a silly so-and-so If I should ever let it go I've got the world on a string 
Sitting on a rainbow I've got that string around my finger What a world Man, I'm in love Life is a beautiful thing As long as I hold the string I'd be a silly so and so If I should ever let it go I've got the world on a string Sitting on a rainbow I've got that string around my finger What a world Man, this is the life Hey now Not only have you carved out a very successful and long-lasting career in the music business for yourself, but you've done it despite some serious challenges to your eyesight. Would you mind sharing that with our, our audience? Actually, ironically, if it wasn't for me losing my eyesight, by the way, I have a visual condition called retinitis pigmentosa, which is um, a degenerative condition. I used to drive and play tennis and bowl and I, you know, until I was in my mid-20s. But it's a condition where you lose your eyesight really one drop at a time. It takes about 15, 20 years from onset to the point where you become legally blind. But I was working, um, working retail at a store selling suits. I was married and I had little children. And I did very well at my job but I was so unfulfilled because I wanted to be a professional guitar player, singer, and entertainer. That was my dream. I started going through the uh, eyesight problems. I reached the point of being legally blind and I couldn't see the price tags on the suits or the faces of the customers anymore. And of course it was a sad thing for me to go through and I was going to doctors and having tests done and whatnot. But at the same time when I didn't have to work because of, of the eyesight, I was completely free to, to do music. That's when I went whole hog and I started playing in every band I could play in and starting the Blues Society and teaching guitar and just, honestly, if I hadn't lost my sight, I wouldn't have had the career in music that I've had. So um, I guess it was a double-edged sword. I started doing things like putting a light on my guitar and looking closely. And I, I, I remember the, the day I said, you know, I'm gonna have to not look at the guitar ever again. I'm gonna to have to learn how to play without any visuals. And it changed the way I play guitar and it made some things more difficult and it made some things easier. I think I play with more feel and I think I, I, I can create more music and melody without moving around a lot. So that kind of had to, I can't do the rock stuff where you go up real high and rip off a lick and I hear guys <laughs> that do that and I go, I wish I could do that. But there's a good chance that I'll miss by an eighth of an inch on, on that spot and that on a guitar can be, can be a nightmare of bad notes. So I just, I just had to learn how to adapt to it and it, it's very, very frustrating um, at times. But when I get to play and do things like this today, it's, it's, it, to me it seems it's all worthwhile. Now the end is near, and so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll say it clear, I'll state my case, of which I'm certain I've lived a life that's full. And traveled each and every highway And more, much more than this I did it my way Regrets, I've had a few But then again too few to mention I did 
what I had to do I saw it through Without exemption I planned Each chartered course Each careful step Along the byway And more Much more than this I did it my way Yes, there were times I'm sure you knew When I bit off More than I could chew And through it all When there was doubt I ate it up And spit it out I faced it all And I stood tall And did it my way I loved I laughed and cried I had my fill My share of losing And now tears subside I find it all so amusing to think I did all that and may I say not in a shy way oh no oh no not be I did it my way For what is a man? What has he got? If not himself Then he has got To say the things He truly feels And not the I took the blows and did it my way. I did it my way, ladies and gentlemen, and for that I will have no regrets. And neither should you. Yes, it was my Gotta love those classic Sinatra hits. Thanks again, Jack. Up next, we'll step into the 70s and 80s with another Buffalo Music Hall of Fame inductee the Boys of Summer Band. They're celebrating 30 years together this year. Originally heavily influenced by the Beatles and the Beach Boys, the Boys of Summer bring a variety of vocal styles to perform everything from country to popular top 40 hits. But today, they will focus on bringing you a few of their favorite songs from the 70s and 80s. Take it away, boys. Kick it off, guys. i 
just want to make love to you tonight I can't wait till the morning has come And I know that the time is just right in straight into my arms you will run And when you come my heart will be waiting To make sure that you're never alone There and then all my dreams will come true dear There and then I will make you my own Every time Show, but this brand new day. 
song from the boys of summer a song written by mr don henley thanks donnie
voice inside my head said don't look back you can never look back i thought i knew what love was did i know those days are gone forever but i've seen this letter go on i didn't see you but i'm shining in the sun you got the top all down in the radio on me there i can tell you my love for you will still be strong and the boys of summer have gone i didn't see you your brown skin shining in the sun you got your hair slipped back and forth wayfarers on me there i can tell you my love for you will still be strong and the boys of summer have gone
Wow, what a fun performance. Thanks again to the boys of summer. Finally, and last, but certainly not least, let's head back to the 60s with someone who was not only influenced by the Beatles and the Beach Boys, but actually had number one hits right alongside them. We are so very happy to bring you a unique interview and performance from the one and only Mr. Gary Lewis of Gary Lewis and the Playboys. Take a look. Mr. Gary Lewis, thank you so much for joining me here inside the Bears Den. Oh, thanks. It's our pleasure. It's, it's our pleasure. pleasure to have you. Um, Gary, so you, Gary Lewis, I mean, you're a third generation artist. You're the son of the, the late, great Jerry Lewis. Right. And you're a singer and you're, you're a musician. I am a musician. Yeah. Um, I thought I was going to be in movies or uh, that's what I was going to try, but uh, when I was going to college, the Beatles came out. And uh, I said, that's it. That's it for me. That's what I want to do. So I formed up the original band uh, from classmates at that college. And for a whole year, we uh, played sororities and fraternity parties. And boy, it was a big deal, too, because we made 40 bucks a night. <laughs> that's 40 bucks is a lot. I mean, well, a lot, right? Yeah, it was great. In reading about you, you know, and learning about your life, from what I've read, you really wanted to make your own way in the entertainment world. You know, obviously with your father, you could have probably engineered certain things, but you like you actually kept singing sort of like a secret, sort of, or the band, or? Uh, yeah, yeah, because um, when, when we started getting seri a little more serious about it, uh, I said, uh, well, I mean, this is gonna be great, except that we don't really have much equipment and we don't have a place to rehearse. Hey, mom, <laughs> you know, so she said, yes, I'll, I'll buy the equipment for you and, and uh, get rehearsal halls and I'll even act as your manager and I won't even take 10%. And I said, mom, you're the greatest. That is just great. She says, don't tell your dad a thing about this. And uh, she said, because if the project fails, then I'm going to have to come up with an excuse as to where the money went. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So we didn't tell my dad anything until this diamond ring was number one in the country and I got my first gold record. Wow. And I took it down to Paramount Studios where he was shooting a movie and I gave him the first gold record. And he had no idea you were recording No artist. idea. He says, when did this happen? You know, I said, oh, mom, she kept her mouth shut too. That's great. <laughs> you know, so that that was uh, that that was actually the the real beginning when mom bought us all the stuff we needed. That's beautiful. God bless mom. Yeah. Right? You have some film credits and you've been in some iconic movies. Even though you you chose not to really take that that same path. Right. Um, what was that experience like? You know, making movies and and must have been around just. Well, I just have to say that when I was. Doing, doing uh, those movies, my dad gave me bit parts in three different movies of his. Dipping peppermint creams into chocolate streams, there is no one who'll snitch to ma. You can dip with each hand, eat until you expand in the Papers, and there you are. If you're ready to start up a rainbow car, your heart will shout hurrah. Just give me your hand, we're off to the land, the land of la la la.
So to be on the set there, ready to do my thing, and here's my dad on the set, who, who I always thought was funnier than hell. All right, folks, just sit back and relax. We will be leaving in just a moment. Would you mind turning that music down a little? Yes, please. We can't hear ourselves talk. Can we? No, no, no word. Why, 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 heavens, no. No trouble at all. She goes downtown in a pair of old blue jeans. Uh, guys. She's the kind of girl Say, uh, who knows what they guys, would you, uh, need. could you hold it down? Heavens. I, I, yeah, I love his humor. Oh, he's yeah. one of the funniest men ever. Uh, and so I always felt like it was a great honor to be yeah. on, on a sound stage with him shooting a movie. It was great. Yeah. Hey, I didn't order this, unless it's a new way to make what I did order. Well, in that case, you've got to show me your ID card, or at least your driver's license. Gary Lewis. The resemblance. Age 17. Well, there's no booze to anyone under 21. But I only... But want nothing, kid. Look, I don't make the rules around here. I'm just supposed to keep them. Now, why don't you drink your nice Shirley Temple and be a good boy? Or else I'll have to report you to your scoutmaster. Yeah, they put me to my scoutmaster. Ha, ha, ha. Drink it yourself. Hey, gray lady, if you're through with your missionary work and that teenage Phil Harris, I'd like you to mix me a drink, unless this is just an observation car. But uh, when it came time to make a decision on what I wanted to do, uh, I didn't want to do that. I just didn't want to do that. No. So I went to theater arts college and started doing plays and this and that and everything. It just wasn't me. Yeah. It wasn't me. And then the Beatles came out. Yeah. And then you found it. Huh? I just clicked. I, I said, oh, there was no doubt. I there was that. no doubt I what I that. wanted to do. Yeah. yeah. Gary, how old were you when you guys hit number one for the first time? Um, Diamond Ring came out. I was 19. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That has to be, that has to be almost overwhelming, too. It probably. was overwhelming I, because yeah. uh, the British invasion was happening at the same time. Yeah. Uh, myself and the Beach Boys were the only two American bands that could stay in the top ten with, with the British yeah. invasion, yeah. The very first song that we ever recorded in December of 1964 went to number one in the country and kicked the Beatles out of number one. I love this tune. It's called This Diamond Ring. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Diamond Ring first came out, we were all, we were jumping, I mean, we were nuts, ecstatically happy. And, I, and our producer stepped in and said, uh, guys, calm down, you know, don't get so excited. You had one hit. Do you know how many one hit people there are in the world? <laughs> he says, calm down. If we, if we can get number two and number three, then we could be on our way. 
You know, that, now that advice was absolutely, I mean, it was uh, imperative for him to tell me that. So we did Count Me In and that went to number two. Yourself and, and your bandmates, the Playboys, you've had seven top ten hits in your career. Correct. And then, a lot of people might not know this about you, but it's sort of like, you know, you're on that, that rise, you know, the band's rising, and then you were drafted, and you enlisted in the Army and went to Vietnam. And you, you Right. We had seven top tens in a row. It's like hitting a brick wall going a thousand miles an hour. I didn't try to get out of it. Everybody's going, oh, you're a fool for not getting out of it. Your dad could get you out of that. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but no, no. I, di I didn't want to do it then. And so many years later, that was the right choice. It yeah. was the right choice. Thank you. Thank you for your service, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. This next tune also went to number two in the country, written by myself, our producer, Snuffy Garrett, and our ranger, Leon Russell. And this... Um, it's called She's Just My Style. Two, three, four. could go back in time and give your younger self one bit of advice, not really even related to your career, but just in general about life, what, what would that be? Boy, that's a good one. I don't think I've ever been asked that one. I would just have to say that no matter what kinds of ups or downs you're going to encounter, you know, trying to get to where you want to go, just remember that this is what you love to do. You chose this. Mm -hmm. This is what you love to do things will always get better if you love it with, a, uh, with all your heart and give it 100%. That's what I would tell the younger kids. I mean, I have told the younger kids that. That's beautiful, thank you. You know, I'm blessed. 
<laughs> That's all I can say. I am thoroughly blessed. Thanks again to Gary Lewis for being here with us inside the Bears Den. What an honor it was to be able to speak to a man that has walked his walk. I also want to encourage you to connect with all of the artists from today's episode, however you can, whether that's social media or even better, if you get a chance to see them live as entertainment resumes, go out and enjoy yourself. They're amazing artists and you will not be disappointed. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to please like this episode and subscribe to our channel so you can catch every episode of Inside the Bears Den on demand whenever it's convenient for you. We'll be here. Next time on Inside the Bears Den, we'll bring you a Western New York classic rock and blues powerhouse, the Iron Eyes Experience. The group and its leader, Butch Maybe, have been a fixture in the local music scene for decades. And we'll also bring you Western New York's own guitar heroes, Jamie Holka and Bruce Wojcik, award-winning musicians from Niagara Falls, New York. Don't miss these performances on the next episode of Inside the Bears Den. It will be available on YouTube starting Friday, June 25th, after 5 p.m. Eastern. And as always, Inside the Bears Den is available 24-7, 365, on demand.